Yeah, sure. My name is Charles Henson with Nashville Computer, and we've been in business since 1988. We are a managed service provider, and we work with small to medium-sized clients. What made you sign up for the course for LinkedIn for MSPs and, you know, get some of your uh, colleagues to sign up for LinkedIn for MSPs? Yeah, LinkedIn is a powerful tool, a networking tool, unlike Facebook, where you're sharing everything and, and posting Ill, illegitimate stuff. You're actually posting business-oriented items, and it's places where you can go and, and find vendors and other partners and people to work with and, and people that you would like to connect with. And one of the things that I had done through the years was trying to connect with various people, but I wasn't having a good uh I didn't have a good job or a good uh, description of what I wanted to get out of LinkedIn. And even my profile was like just halfway set up. And I went to a LinkedIn conference and I thought, man, I really need to, to use this more. Uh, they gave me a profile setting of, of kind of where I were, where I was at the time in the stats. And I thought, man, I should be using LinkedIn for a lot more connecting because there was nobody in that room I was connected to. Yet they were all business owners here in Nashville. So that's kind of where we were. Uh, when we signed up for uh, the MSP program, it was actually through LinkedIn that I saw that the advertisement for the, the product. And I thought, you know what, I need to look at this and take a look at it because I'm on LinkedIn, I see the ad for it, let me actually sign up and see what this is about. What was your biggest takeaway of going through the course, you know, um did you find that LinkedIn was a big waste of time up to that point? What was what were some of the things that, that you used in the early first few workshops that allowed you to get traction pretty quick? Well, honestly, the the LinkedIn profile that I had was was lacking. So inside the workshop, on the on the live workshops, we would go in and one of the first things I remember doing is disabling notifications so that people don't see those those notices going out. And then I made more edits to my profile over the course of the next couple of sessions than I had probably made to the LinkedIn since I set it up a few years back. And so that to me was, was key of, you know, getting the right profile picture, getting my title in there, getting it set up to where other people would actually want to connect with me and uh, where they would actually accept my request when I sent it out. There was a lot of people that I had sent requests to that had never connected with me. And so, uh, I mean, I was really lacking in connections at that time. So up to that time, did you feel that LinkedIn was a waste of time up to that point just because you weren't being effective with it? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good tool for connecting and, and getting updates and, and learning about people's businesses and, and learning what articles they write and, you know, and sharing some posts on your own. But as far as like trying to get meetings out of it or meet other people or new people, you know, uh, you meet people virtually. And that was that, you know, you, you'd be online and you see them and, and you'd see their post and you could like it, you could share it, whatever. But I never really used it as a tool to meet up with people and learn how, you know, to do business with them and how I should be doing business in the Nashville area. So as far as the meetings go, it, how do you find the meetings are different from a traditional sales generated uh, meeting when you have those meetings? Yeah, the, the meetings are very relaxed. Um, a lot of times people are actually asking me, you know, hey, how did you come up with this idea? How did you, you know, why did you invite me to coffee? And, and they, they, almost, they almost took the meeting because they're curious, if you will. And it opens up a whole discussion around LinkedIn and how it can be used. And, uh, you know, really, we start talking about the city, Nashville. We talk about business. We don't, I'm not there to sell them on managed services. I'm not there to, to pitch them on my product and my offerings. And, I mean, I had one guy that just kept inquiring about Nashville Computer and wanted more stuff and, and more information. So I gave him the information. But I told him, I said, look, really what I'm wanting is to meet people in Nashville that own businesses, run businesses, see what issues they're running up against, and then really ask them questions that I can never ask during a sales meeting. And those are questions like, how do you choose an IT company? What do you like or dislike about the IT industry? 
Do you trust IT professionals? And what, what is your take on, on IT companies? And those are discussions that you cannot have with a prospect because you will lose that prospect. You'll lose your, you know, you're in a sales process at that point. With these people, I can ask them stuff like, how do you make IT buying decisions? Do you buy from Dell Direct or would you rather go through a third party? You know, do you care if we make margins on it? Um, you know, how do you look at when an IT guy comes in and tries to pitch you right there versus, you know, trying to build that relationship over time? And with that, what you're doing is you're, you're not only building a relationship, having that easy one-on-one, -on -one, you know, conversation over coffee, but you can also ask them, what do they look for in an ideal client? And when they start telling you about their ideal client, what they look for, then you start thinking of people that you know that you could probably refer them to. And then the cool thing is, is they'll reverse that question and ask you, well, who's your ideal candidate? And so then it gives me the opportunity to sit there and tell them exactly what type of businesses we work with very well versus who is not a good fit for Nashville Computer. All right, so you start that relationship by uh, looking to do something for them first, and then they obviously want to reciprocate after that. Absolutely. It's, it's not all about me and Nashville Computer. It's about who they are, their business, what do they do, you know, how involved in the community are they. And then, I mean, one guy, we sit there, and we probably talked about real estate way more than anything else. I've got, you know, three rental properties. He has uh, two or three rental properties we started talking about the housing market. We've talked about strategies and we talked about, you know, uh, long-term goals with those properties. And so those conversations are things that, you know, I would have never in the past gone to LinkedIn, connected with somebody and then had a coffee with them to talk about real estate. Hmm. I mean, it's just, I, I'm an IT guy, right? He's a investment guy. So how does that, what, what do we have in common? Real estate. We both love it. We both have rental properties and we get it. So we really clicked in that meeting. So really LinkedIn versus other social media, Facebook, Twitter really allows you to hone in on building relationships with people. And do you find that that's the most effective tool to be, to be using to do that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I look at Facebook as something more on the personal side. This is something you're going to post pictures of your kids, your family, things of that nature. And a lot of people, if they're running an IT business or if they're running, uh, you know, a, a CPA firm or whatever, they're going to keep their Facebook kind of private. It's kind of, it's going to be toward their family. It's going to be toward their, their siblings and their, you know, their parents and grandchildren and, and so on and so forth. I don't really see Facebook as, as the medium to go out and, and post because a lot of people, you know, they, they, they talk about religion, they talk about political, and they start talking about different things and, and people get on a rant. And, you know, you don't see a lot of that, almost none of that on LinkedIn. And so to me, LinkedIn is definitely the platform for businesses to really strive and try to interact with other business owners and, you know, see what's in their minds because you get to read their posts, you know, their articles, things that they have, you know, talked about. And then it gives you that conversation starter too, as saying, Hey, I saw that writing that, you know, that write up that you did on X, Y, Z. And so that is a good, you know, uh, icebreaker, if you will. So as far as now that you've been working with, with us for a while, um, what would you say that, that the LinkedIn for MSPs program and our done for you platform, what would you say that that really, what do we do really, really well? you really get a lot of uh, good quality connections. The people that I'm connected to now on LinkedIn is uh, people that I would not have thought to connect with in the past. It's uh, people that were connected to people that I know and, and I'm already connected to, but I would not have thought to go that arm's length reach away to connect to those people. And so that's, that's one good thing. The other thing is getting the meetings. Uh, you know, it's, it's up to me to actually, you know, call the customer and, and get them signed up and schedule the meeting, you know, that, that corresponds with, with me and them and, and when we can work that out, where to meet, so on and so forth. And sometimes it's been hard to keep up with that because, um, because there's been so many of them that I need to get connected and 
find out exactly when. Uh, you'd made a comment about the effectiveness of the last few months of uh, your LinkedIn campaign versus what you've been able to do in the last three years. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do, it, Andrew. It's, it's pretty simply this. I've, I've had more connections and more coffee meetings and introductions to people in the last three months than I have in the last three years combined. And that to me is powerful because now it's kind of starting a snowball effect to where I'm getting more and more connections and I'm getting more and more people talking to me that I, I never would have talked to before. So it's, it's huge uh, night and day difference over the way I used to use LinkedIn. Great. Any other results that you've gotten from LinkedIn? Any business leads that you wouldn't have normally had? Or I think you had mentioned that uh, you had a possible speaking engagement at, uh, out of that as well, out of some of your meetings. Yeah, so one of the guys that I met with uh, does uh, financial services, and we were talking about cybercrime and the different threats and the things out there. And he said, well, I see that you're a speaker. He said, what does that look like? Would it be possible for you to come out and speak to, you know, if, if I got some of my clients together and had breakfast, would you come out and speak to them? And can we talk about doing a joint venture on that? Whereas, you know, hey, you bring some clients, I bring some clients, and maybe we can uh, get them to meet each other as well as give them some added value for the services that we both offer. So it's a win-win for, for both of us because I get in front of his clients and I'm going to bring in some of my clients and they're all going to get educated on uh, cybercrime and, and cybersecurity as well as he can talk to them from the financial standpoint of what they need to be thinking about for retirement and, and maybe kids going to college or whatever. And I think that's a perfect instance of really what doors LinkedIn opens up to you. Um, you know, and that's again, people looking through your profile and seeing that there's, there's something there and people typically don't meet with you unless they have some agenda too. You know, I think there's always a reason behind why somebody would agree to meet with you. Um, and that's just finding out what that is. And that's, that's part of the adventure and having some of the meetings too. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's one gentleman that I had coffee with. He does uh, software for construction companies and he's put a lot of companies on the cloud. And, and if they've got like less than five people, then it's real easy for him to manage. But if it's over five users and it's a larger construction company, then he starts to have an issue with, you know, getting people to be able to uh, take them to cloud because it's a little bit over his head of what he does. It's, it's out of his expertise. And so one of the things that we talked about is how we can work together. And if he has those leads, you know, we can talk to him, uh, talk to those clients and help them get into a cloud environment. And then we also talked about the existing construction companies that we have to see if his tools that he had available, his software was something that would benefit them. So it, it's a win-win. And, you know, even if you go out and meet with somebody and, and learn that, you know, that what you do is, is not always uh, intermixed, then that's okay. It, it goes back to when Jack Daly was talking about doing a triathlon and he said he went to the swim coach and he was taking swim lessons and he's like, well, you know what? I need to buy a bike. And uh, the guy said, oh, well, you need to go talk to so-and-so, you know, go talk to Mike. Mike can sell you a bike. So he goes to Mike and, and, and buys a bike, you know, it's like $7,000 bike. And so he goes back to his swim coach. He's like, so how many bikes have you bought from Mike? And he's like, you know, his customer service was great. And he said, I don't ride a bike. I teach swimming and I do swimming. I don't, I don't do that. So, you know, he's like, well, you know, I need a runner. You know, who do I talk to about running? And he says, well, you know, I need a runner coach. And so he sends him to somebody else. And then he goes to the running coach and the running coach is making money. The guy that sold the bike is making money. And the guy teaching swim lessons is the guy that's doing the referrals. And they're all referring each other back and forth, but they never buy each other's products. So I think the, the true thing about LinkedIn is, and, and what Andrew's system teaches you, is that you've got to build these connections because you never know where the next swim coach or running uh, coach or the bike shop owner is going to be because they may be able to give you referrals that you never thought were possible. So think outside of just a, hey, I want to sell you something or I want you to buy my product. Think of more of how can I connect with this person and have a mutual beneficial agreement or um, area, an avenue for us to pass business back and forth to each other, even though they may be too small you know, to be your customer or they may not ever buy your product. So you mentioned too that you've taken other LinkedIn courses. I know there's a lot of consultants in the market, a lot of gurus in the market. What would you say, the LinkedIn for MSP, how would you say that it's different from 
other LinkedIn gurus or other LinkedIn marketing firms out there? <laughs> well, quite simple. Uh, I found out about this program through LinkedIn. All the others I've ever heard about were all through email. So don't spam me with email and, and send me stuff and, and try to advertise in front of me. Reach out on LinkedIn and connect with me and, and sell me that service through LinkedIn. And I know that your service works because I've seen it on LinkedIn. So if somebody was on the fence right now, they were thinking about signing up for the LinkedIn for MSPs, either the live workshop or the course or our done for you program, what would be your best advice to them? Go into it, buy into the product, sign up for it, set the time aside to actually update your profile, to actually follow through with the emails, follow through with the connections, work the system, keep up with your spreadsheet, track it, because what's going to happen over time is you're going to get these engagements with people where you're having coffee with them. You have these one-on-ones and I'm telling you the conversations are going to be very, very beneficial to your business. There was a financial guy that I, I worked with and I'm not going to share this advice uh, on camera, but I will say that the advice he gave me about why he chooses IT people and the services as well as how he has closed 100% of his sales was truly something that I could never pay for. And so that valuable insight from that person that will never be my customer, however, the way he shared that information with me has set me up and my salespeople up to have better success in closing future sales. So you never know who you're gonna meet and what gold nuggets they're going to give you to help you build your business. So if you're on the fence about it and you think, well, I can't afford it, I think you can't afford not to do it because if you're not connecting with somebody on LinkedIn, your competition is. So it better be you.